Hey guys, this is Billy Davis from Davis and Pressure Wash and Painting coming out of Hammond, Louisiana. We're gonna uh, try to uh, show y'all from start to finish on uh, this house wash and driveway. We don't uh, do too many uh, houses each year, maybe 10, 12, 15 houses each year. Um, primarily our business is uh, commercial and government work. So we have sort of kind of moved away from residential over the last 10 years. But this is a client of ours that owns some commercial property. So um, they wanted us to go ahead and hit the residence. So we uh, are happy to do so as usual. So uh, first thing first, we hop out of the truck. We knew where we was gonna park, um, have direct access to this water hose. And that is the first thing we start doing is feeding the tank regardless of anything else because it's gonna take a while to get uh, 150 to 200 gallons in there so we can get these beast of a machine started up eight to eight gallon per minute machines they actually put out about 10 or 11 depending on what downstream and tip so um we are going to downstream this house so i have my downstreamer here that after i start the machine and get it warmed up i'll put all that in and i'll take my um pressure hose off the hose reel i primarily use a hose reel just as a hose holder so I don't run it through the manifold like some, some guys do. So whatever you want to do, that's up to you. So I'll just uh, take off enough hose to reach the far end of the house. So we'll take, uh, string out enough hose to reach that corner. And then we'll take a left and go all the way to the other corner. That'll make sure we have enough to come around here to the right to reach the backside. So we're going to make some chemicals. <clears throat> I have just a very tiny bit of water in here reason why i do that is to sort of kind of balance out the ph so <clears throat> what we do we'll have chris here one of my main guys we're gonna um add just some gain soap or whatever you have about a half a cup of it this is actually a seven gallon little bucket and we're gonna mix up about five gallons of solution that may or may not get all of this done so now we just have a little bit of water and we have our soap. We're going to start putting our bleaches in there. Today we were um, out of bleach in a drum, so we're just using some concentrated bleach out of the jug. Um, it's pretty good as long as it hadn't got super cold. And this is actually chilly today, so we just went and picked these up. So they were still kind of warm out of the store. That's another thing if you... Um, having your bleach stored overnight in your truck or something um especially if you're using some of these little singles like we are today you might want to just go ahead and move them into your utility room or if you got a uh, protected heated and cooled garage just put them in there so they won't get freezing cold so we'll put four of these into this bucket Now at the same time, we have in the tank filling. That's like I said, that's first, so it's doing its thing. And then here in a second, I'll start this machine and warm it up. So that's the third and fourth. And we have our other little mixer. So this is another little secret that many, not many people will let you know about, but it really works phenomenal. If you can um, grab you some of this, it doesn't have to be the expensive kind, but this is basically your pine saw. We're gonna put about half of that in there. That's about half. So that's our mixture. So again, we got four gallons of bleach solution, which is concentrated, which is 8.25%, give or take. We had a little bit of water, sort of kind of balance out the pH. I found out that that helps some. Um, also a half a bottle of pine saw. And what I'll do, I'm gonna warm this up. I'm gonna cut away from this because this, when I start this up, it's gonna probably be a little loud. You know, I'm not gonna be able to hear me, but I'll stir this up. Then we're gonna, um, take our hose off the hose reel back there 
string it to our far side and i'll cut back to y'all when we downstreaming and uh, show you how we're doing that we got a few things to move around the house on the front and back porch so we're going to move everything and we're going to downstream the whole house two or three times before we start washing and i'll show y'all some of that we'll be right back porches little front porch uh significant size back porch we end up running into some sofas back there and lawn stuff i mean you can imagine so it was uh took a few minutes for that so now uh, i have uh, kind of warmed the machine up got everything ready to go here so it may get a little noisy so we're gonna get this is my down streamer so I'm about to to make sure the suction is fine on this. So I got my other guys down back over there um, with the trigger and ball valve. If you don't have another person with you, you can just use a ball valve. That is very helpful. So we're going to go ahead and start this. And then I'll check our suction on this hose, even on an idle. Let me choke this. So we up and running now. What I do is, I can feel it. I don't know if you can hear it. So that's definitely my downstreamer is working. So he's instructed when he gets soap, he's going to start um, downstreaming. Now I've used just uh, a piece of little flex hose here. This kind of. I definitely apologize for the poor camera work. I'm doing this with one hand. Just bear with me here. I know I'm jerking y'all all around here, but we're about to get it straight. Right now I'm feeding my hose through my little pipe, and I'll show you that here in a second. There it is. I got it through, kind of poking out. So I'm going to just take this and stir up my mixture really good. It doesn't take much. So now it's drawing soap, but of course it's on idle. So I'm going to slowly increase my engine speed here to give him ample flow. I usually, it's cold, it's middle of January. We like in the high 30s. So I'll just warm this thing up and slowly increase the pressure. Then I'll go to a full throttle and then back it off about 30% for downstream. And that's all we're going to need. So we good to go. We will go join him. And again, we are feeding the tank. So um, we got about 130 gallons in there when I started it. Now what I'm going to do is splice this video all together like in iMovies or another little program I have. So it, um, you know, it's going to be in little segments that y'all will see. But this is show some of the new guys out there. And even some of the guys y'all been doing this for a while. I, I, if y'all like me, I like to see, see what other people are doing. You know, just to see if I pick up on any new tricks. I've been doing this for a long time, but you can always learn something, you know. Got a lot of smart people out there come up with new ways of doing it. So here he is down streaming. And again, we are just doing the house. We're not doing a roof today. That may be something I'll talk to him about at some other point. But it is expensive, so I'll have to square it off and measure it and see what, what he's got up there. So what we're going to do, we're going to go around the house, all four sides of it, and put a nice coat of solution that I showed y'all earlier on the house, the windows, the brick. We will do everything but any uh, stained wood surfaces. And there's actually a door set over here that we're gonna minimize our splatter on. If you happen to do splatter it, you can immediately rinse it off and you should be fine. Um, sometimes I'll pre-wet those doors if, I, if it's really windy. But otherwise, just kind of avoid it. And if you get some on it, just rinse it off, you know, pretty rapidly and you're good to go. 
So I'm going to give y'all a little tour of the house real quick while he's continuing to apply. And like I said, we will do this twice. We will run around and sort of kind of counterclockwise. Then we will backtrack to our starting point, applying again. And usually that's all it takes. You know, we're going to have a couple spots here and there that we got to kind of, we call them hot spots where the soap and solution just didn't do everything it needed to do for some reason or the other. I could bump up the mix on it, but he does have a lot of plant life down here and we don't want to impact that in a negative way. Although a lot of this stuff probably is dormant because of us being in January, but I still always like to play it on the safe side. So this is the back side of the house. We always do little air conditioner pads and generator pads. Whatever you run run across, I like to make it look nice. Of course, we've got a big window set here. We shouldn't have to touch that with a brush or nothing. Just our downstream solution should take care of it. And good rinsing this is the back porch area. This is where he had all this stuff under here, man. Uh, some of the, sometimes that's about half the battle, getting everything moved out. Then moving it back like this sucker. Yeah, I got a big old cloth couch. I think this is just something really. They got the dog <laughs> for the dog to lay on. But but still, you know, you don't want to get it all soapy and bleachy and then wet. So we just drug it out here. And when we're doing this, we hit all this lower end stuff. And rinse it very well as as usual all these poles once we sh that put our solution on it they should be fine they shouldn't need no rubbing if they do we always do carry a brush with us but that is unusual but you always want to have that brush just in the off chance that you got to rub something so this is back to where we just started a few minutes ago we'll catch up with chris and see where he's at. He has been doing this for a little over three years now. And I always try to go out on every job with him. Him and the other guys as well. But, um, you know, as a business owner, you're always kind of scared of what could happen, what could go wrong. So I like to attend every job at least for a little while. Just to make sure, even if i got something else to go do, I'll stop by and check on in them here and there so this is where we at we are uh, moving right on along doesn't take long to soap these houses down just a few minutes like I said we'll do a secondary soap coming back the other way and it's taking a little longer because usually I'm doing a soap and he's pulling hoses keeping it out of plants so once he reaches the back side, I'm going to let y'all go and then we'll pick back up maybe when we're doing our power rinsing and show you how that goes and just kind of give you an idea how we do these houses. I've done thousands and thousands of them and every house is different. Kind of find your own little way to do them and what's quicker and try to save you a few steps here and there. So I'll be back in a little bit. He's right here on his back corner. This is the back side of the house. So we're going to apply our soap to this. Now once we get all the way back down there to our finishing spot, <clears throat> we'll walk back around the other way, applying. Then we'll start washing. I'll show you a little bit of that. All right, guys, I'm back. We are now uh, in the power rinsing mode. We have been doing this for about 15 minutes now, and we are about... 60% of the way of the house done So overall so far, you know uh, Getting here getting set up getting the hoses out moving stuff off the porches and all that fun stuff um, We probably about an hour and an hour 15 minutes into it. We're not really trying to rush a whole lot It's cold out here. This is our last job of the day. It's right at two something uh, probably right three I think two two forty five p.m. And uh, we're all bundled up. We got like three pairs of pants on, several jackets, and then we cap them off with our waterproof gear. So we're not trying to rush, we're just kind of getting it done. And it's a bit, like I said, the last job of the day. So 
we like you know we take probably two hours to do everything maybe two hours and 15 minutes once we move everything back we still got the driveway to do but it's a small little piece out there so it doesn't take about 10 15 minutes to do that with the surface cleaner then we'll um, walk around of course make sure everything's put back kind of about where we found it and just kind of double check see if we need to do anything else but usually it's not then roll everything up and head on home for the day so that's pretty much how we do it like I said he's doing a power rinse and now I'll show you he has a uh, we just down we use our downstream J rod nozzle and everything we very 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 rarely have to put a pressure tip in it and um, downstream with that nozzle go pull your soap line out of your soap bucket and use the same nozzle so that's the downstream of nozzle there it's not very much pressure at all you put your hand in front of it if you're familiar with it but it is 10 gallons a minute so it doesn't take much to you know to knock some mildew or mold off and matter of fact you can do your brick with that you can do your edges around the window the only thing if you don't have a soft start unloader you do got work to watch your burst pressure but other than that it's just a few hundred psi but 10 gallons a minute works well so that's kind of how we do residential um our rig is primarily set up for commercial work so you know my hose reels are different than what a residential would be and um and another thing we had run out of that 12 and a half and i just it's about 25 minutes away one way and then 25 minutes back our little place that we go get it and to be honest with you i was like you know we could probably just grab some bleaches out of walmart right there we was already in walmart so um grab some bleaches out of there and it it does it i mean one way or the other you know i mean if i'd have had to drum bleach it probably would go a little quicker but but either way you know i was right there i'll probably pick up some bleach in the next few days and I, we're supposed to have some hard freezes here the next few days. And uh, I was kind of not wanting to get a drum of it right now. But if I have to, I will. But anyway, I hope this helps. Like always, if y'all need to reach out to me, um, my phone number is 985-345-0778. And I'll talk to y'all soon.